tends to collapse, you know, at the top of the back swing instead of really feeling like it's structurally supporting the swing. I've also noticed that in your grip, it looks like, you know, you have a hard time keeping a firm hold on the, on the club. So what I'm going to want you to do is to try to uh, adjust your grip and try a couple different grips to see what really works best for you. And I'm going to have you try a 10 finger grip. Basically, you just grip it left hand, right hand, and slide them together until they're together so all 10 fingers are on the club. I'm also going to have you try a reverse overlap grip where you slide that left hand up and the index finger of the right hand goes over the pinky finger of your, uh, I mean, the index finger of your left hand goes over the pinky finger of your right hand. Uh, Herman is using that one now. He can show you that grip you know, to see if that works for you. He found out it was very easy to change to that grip. If you're really a dominant right hand person, you're going to find probably one of these two grips, a 10 finger or reverse overlap is going to fit you better. And it's going to allow you to get the feel that you can really you know, maintain your hold on the golf club. Now before you do that, what I want you to do is get the sense of how you'd hold the club in your right hand only. So I'm going to have you play some small shots right hand only. And if you get a good feel of playing these right hand only shots, you're going to notice that that right hand has a lot of control over the golf club. Once you have that, your right hand in position to control the golf club for your right hand shots, all you have to do is slide your left hand into position. Okay, to recap again, I want you to get a hold of the club in your right hand only. You can even just swing it in the air a few times to get the feel of whether you have a good hold on the club. Once you have the hold on the club with your right hand, go ahead and just play some small one-handed shots. These can be 20 yards or 30 yard shots, you know, definitely less than 50 yards. Because all you're trying to do is get the sense of how you'd hold that club right hand only. How you get a good firm hold on the club with your right hand so you can play one-handed shots. Once you have that feel of how you'd hold it for the one-handed shot, you just slide your thumb in underneath the thumb pad of the right hand. You can go 10-finger grip or reverse overlap grip, whichever one ends up working best for you. And you'll probably have to try them for a little while to really you know, give it a good edu educated try to see what really works best for you. Now you can go ahead, put that grip on, go through your procedure of your setup, and go ahead and play some more full shots with your new grip. So over the last 25 years, I've been having truly dominant right-hand golfers try the 10-finger grip and the reverse overlap grip because they were never taught it before. Everybody's either taught overlap or interlock. And in 25 years, every single truly dominant right-hand golfer that I've trained has chosen either the 10-finger or the reverse overlap grip. I don't prescribe it to them. I just say I want you to try all four grips. Now, they've already tried the interlock and the overlap most of the time. So then they just have to try the 10-finger and the reverse overlap. the way you have been doing in the past. Okay, and when we looked at your actual golf swing, one thing that we noticed in the golf swing is that you had a tendency, you were kind of a little bit lifting in the back swing with your body. You did drop your weight on the ground during the transition, which helped you retain some angles, but you tended to stay down and through the golf ball and try to extend too far out for you since you're a side-on golfer. Your extension is going to be at about 45 degrees past the ball. So it's pointing downward at a 45 degree angle past the ball. All right. Now, when you try to extend past that point, you get that chicken wing in your left arm. So we're going to want you to learn how to extend down at a 45 degree angle. without chicken winging okay so part of this is learning to get to that extension point the other part is learning to load your ground force and launch it properly you, you tend to do it a little bit backwards you end up almost a little more up in the backswing and down in the downswing I'd like to see you more pushing into the ground during the backswing and pushing up off the ground during the downswing so I'm gonna give you a little load and extend drill here and this is just a partial shot drill for now so that you can learn how to get your ground force loaded during the backswing and then you can learn to get to your extension point. Okay? So the basic drill looks like this. And you're going to have a sense that you're really pushing into the ground during the, the backswing. Now, being that you're somewhere around that 60-40 weight distribution, you want to stay and be very 
really start getting these good, you're going to notice that if anything, you're going to start to get pushes. You're going to get shots that are solid, but and they're going higher than you used to, and they're going to be a little bit pushes. That's okay. If you get that solid push going, I can teach you how to release it a little better and how to put it get back on target. Okay, now when you're good at this drill, what I'm going to want you to do is perform the drill, pause, and then go to your finish from there. And this is a two-piece action for a while. So this is going to be what it looks like. Okay, when you've done that for a while and that feels good, then you can start to blend them together. You can make more full swings with the load and extend feel and see how that works for you. So in that swing I went ahead and I created the load and extend action but I just kept going all the way through to a full finish and I got more of a full shot. So those are the basic drills I want you to work on for right now. And once you're good at those, we can assess what's going on.